Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Hedgewood channel. So today we will be dealing with the veterinary microbiology section and to be precise, we'll be dealing with the bacteriology section and today's bacterium is Clostridium. So Clostridium is a very big genus. So discussing all the species of Clostridium in one video, like that will be very bad because we cannot include all the points in such a short of time. So we have divided this session into four parts where we will be dealing with each bacteria species that is present in the genus Clostridium. So in this video, we will be dealing with the general microbiology of the species Clostridium of the genus Clostridium and we will be dealing with the Clostridium tetany species. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button for more updates. So this is actually the taxonomical part. So they belong to the family Clostridiaceae and the phylum Firmicutes and the genus is actually Clostridium. So type species is a species that will be showing all the properties belonging to the genus. So it is actually Clostridium butyricum. So you have to keep this in your mind. It's Clostridium butyricum. So the introductory part, they are actually the gram-positive anaerobic spore forming rods usually seen in the soil and small intestine of animals and human beings. So moving to the general morphological points, the all Clostridia are motile with peritrichus flagella, except Clostridium welshi or Clostridium perfringens. Clostridium welshi is the old name and Clostridium perfringens is the new name. So all are non-capsulated organisms except Clostridium welshi because they are capsulated. So we have got two different points with the Clostridium perfringens or Clostridium welshi. So Clostridia are anaerobic bacteria. So Clostridium edematiens or Clostridium novae are strict anaerobes and whenever they are exposed to the oxygen they will be dying. Whereas Clostridium welshi or Clostridium perfringens is micro aerophilic. They will be tolerating oxygen. So we have got three points on micro, the Clostridium welshi. So next is spore formation occurs with varying frequency in different species. The shape and position of the spores vary in different species. So whenever we are dealing with the species, we will be telling about the shape and position of the spores. So spores usually bulge the organisms. So we'll be dealing with it. So a very useful media for the isolation of Clostridia is Robertson's cooked meat broth. So RCBM is a short form of the Robertson cooked meat broth. So this question was asked in many ICR examinations. So be vigilant with this point. So Clostridia grow in the medium and rendering the broth turbid. So most of the species will be producing gas and that will turn the meat broth into a turbid. So there are two species according to the color which they will be turning the Robertson's cooked meat broth. So they are actually saccharolite. They will be mainly turning the cooked broth into pink color. So they are actually edematians that become showway and welshi species. And proteolytic species, they will be turning the meat broth into black color. And they will be producing foul and pervasive odor. They are actually the tetany and botulinum. So we can easily learn the tetany and botulinum belong to the proteolytic species. And also you can include Clostridium hemolyticum. So it's very easy. You can include proteolytic species as tetany, botulinum and hemolyticum. So the Clostridia are fermentative because they will be fermentating and they are oxidase negative and catalase negative or organisms. So moving to the cultural characteristics that is Clostridia are anaerobic and optimum temperature for growth is actually 37 degrees Celsius. Robertson cooked meat is the best useful medium. Saccharolytic species will be turning it into a pink color and proteolytic species will be turning the black color with foul smell and most of the species will be producing gas. So this is actually the turning of the Robertson cooked meat broth. So classification, they are divided into three major groups according to the kind of disease they produce. First class is the histotoxic Clostridia because they will be introducing the pathogenesis into the histo, that is tissue mainly. So the class of example is Chauvin, Septicum and Novi. Next is enterotoxigenic, that will, they will be producing enterotoxemia and they will be producing food poisoning and they are also histotoxic. They will be mainly destroying the intestinal epithelial cells, that is actually perfringence. Next is the neurotoxic Clostridia. 
they will be producing potent neurotoxins and the neurotoxins will be disturbing the mechanisms of the neurons so the class is neurotoxic clostridia and the example is clostridium tetany and clostridium botulinum so let's move to the species characterization of the clostridium tetany species the general microbiology of clostridium genus is of so clostridium tetany so in 1884 arthur nicolier isolated strychnine like toxin of tetanus from free living anaerobic soil bacteria so the bacteria is known as bacilli of nicolier so this term is very important so this was asked in many public service examinations so rosenbach demonstrated the slender bacillus with raw terminal spores in case of tetanus and kitasato isolated clostridium tetany Tetanus toxoid vaccine was discovered by P. Descombe in 1924. This also was asked in previous ICR examination. So moving to the habitat of Clostridium tetany, it is ubiquitous and has been recovered from wide variety of other sources. Soil is the especially contaminated feces is the natural habitat. So moving to the morphology, Clostridium tetany is straight, slender, gram-positive road that is characteristically producing a terminal spherical endospore that bulges the cell giving the drumstick appearance so this was an icr previous examination question so it occurs singly and sometimes as chains so they are non-capsulate and motile by peritrichus flagella so moving to the cultural characters very strict anaerobe and grows at the optimum temperature of 37 degrees celsius it's actually 37 not 370 and ph will be nearly 7.4 so it grows on ordinary media and the growth is improved by blood and serum so surface colonies are very difficult to obtain as the growth has a marked tendency to swarm over the surface of the agar, especially if the medium is moist. So cultural characters on host blood agar, alpha hemolysis is produced, which later develops into beta hemolysis due to the production of hemolysin that is known as tetanolysin. So they will be growing in the Robertson cooked meat growth and the gelatin slab cultures a fir tree type of growth. In the gelatin step, they will be having filtry appearance. For bacillus anthracis, they will be having inverted filtry appearance because they are aerobic and here this organism is anaerobic. So greenish fluorescence is produced on media containing neutral bread. So moving to the biochemical properties, they are proteolytic properties and does not ferment any sugars. It forms indole that is indole positive. It is MR and VP negative that is M hydride test and Vogus Prosker test negative and nitrate test they are also negative. So moving to the resistance, the endospores are highly resistant and while boiling, it kills the spores mostly in 15 minutes. So autoclaving at 120 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes and dry heat temperature of 150 degrees Celsius for more than one hour is completely sporicide. So iodine, one percentage aqua solution of iodine and H2O2 kill the spores within a few hours. So moving to the antigenicity, which is a very important part of Clostridium, the 10 serological types have been recognized based on the flagellar antigens, that is type 1 to 10. Type 6 contain non-flagellated strains. Clostridium tetany type 6 contain non-flagellated strains. So all the types produce the same neurotoxin, that is tetanospasmin, which can be neutralized by one common antitoxin. So toxins, they will be producing two distinct toxins, that is tetanospasmin and Tetanolysin. And the third to toxin is also there that is actually non spasmogenic. It is not of very much significance. Tetanolysin is a hemolysin causing lysis of RBCs of rabbit and horse. Tetanospasmin is a very potent neurotoxin responsible for clinical manifestation of tetanus. So you can just see about the tox tox toxins and toxoids. So the hosts and human are sus most susceptible for descending tetanus. Carnivores are comparatively resistant and if at all they are having tetanus, it will be mainly ascending tetanus. Now, guinea pigs, mice, goats and rabbits are susceptible in the descending order. Birds and reptiles are very highly persistent. This is actually the illustration of ascending tetanus. This is the ascending tetanus illustration. This is the drumstick appearance of Clostridia. So, moving to the tetanus, it is actually influenced by several factors of the antigenicity and dose. The incubation period is varying from 2 to nearly 12 days. And you can go for this head and neck, they will become rigid in case of tetanus. So we will be dealing with this all the clinical symptoms of tetanus in the pathology of tetanus video. This is actually the tetanus. So nictitating membrane will be protruded. We can also go for lobe jaw appearance. 
Respiration becomes shallow due to nervous paralysis of respiratory muscles and respiratory nerves. So tetanus is also known as chamni. So this is the pathogenesis. So diagnosis is actually through symptoms or next is through direct microscopy. So next is isolation. Now moving to the prevention and control. The disease is due to the action of toxin. So the obvious and most dependable method of prevention is to build up anti-toxic immunity by active immunization that is vaccination. Surgical methods are surgical attention, antibiotics and immunization. So surgical attention aims at removal of foreign bodies and tetanus can be prevented mainly by antibiotics. Dacitracin or neomycin may be applied locally and antibiotics have no action on the toxin. Antibiotics will not be having any action on the toxin. Penicillin can be given at injections and orally till the healing is established. Antitoxin is needed and toxoid may be given subcutaneously to promote an active immunization even in those animals which have received antitoxin. So this is the tetanus toxoid and this is the tetanus antitoxin. So flushing with hydrogen peroxide in the wound area produces aerobic condition so that the anaerobic close to the tetany cannot survive in the wounded region and the chance of tetanus will be very less. So tetanus can be prevented by antibiotics that is large doses of benzyl penicillin when administered 4 hours after infection but not after 8 hours. So prompt administration is very essential. Thank you.